old and in the way, sisters, laugh and learn with me, Janet. And me, Nancy. The, the Bitchin', Bitchin sisters. sisters. As we tell it like it is, the way it was back then and the mess we're in now. We're growing old in a new world with skyrocketing costs, crazy fashions, changing norms, and I hate to remind you, with limited time left. <laughs> yeah. We've got some practical ideas that might work for you. And we definitely have some opinions that you might have, too. We'll entertain you and inform you. Let's look back at how it was and ahead to what's coming. And if you're young, maybe you can learn something from your elders. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, we're wise, but we've definitely been there and done that. Our take on tech. You know, I'm sitting here, Janet watching you, watching the screen, and you manipulating everything. It's all Greek to me. I I am just amazed at what you know about technology. Well, hmm. The whole idea of technology is a lifelong saga for me. I'm 79. I remember gathering around the radio for stories. <laughs> no. I remember the first TV in the neighborhood. All yep. the kids would go there yeah. to somebody's house. They Anytime had nothing to us. yeah. They had nothing to say about it. We're it, we're home from school. You have a TV. We go there yeah. and we watch. Uh, Howdy doody. Yeah, or something like that. Cameras went from brownie camera to Polaroid, black and white to color, and then color TV and videotapes and rentable machines, DVDs, no, streaming, gigantic computers that have now morphed into tiny cell phones and phones from operated assisted party lines. And Fitbits. Yeah. And of course, long distance telephones were only used for relaying serious news of deaths and births. So, there, that was all of it. <laughs> and then when I entered the work world, I began as a photo retoucher. I worked on four by five black and white negatives, illuminating them from behind with a soft light. And then you have a pencil that's sharpened with a point about three inches long, and you, you use that to make little dots a on that negative. A physical pencil. Yeah, a physical pencil to um, improve the features of the people in the portraits. Then color came in, and I used dyes to achieve the same look. Then I became a professional photographer, photographer and um, yeah, one thing led to another. Why? Then Yeah, and then when I completed a BA in art, I was a jeweler, and then I made jewelry. I guess I wasn't that good. <laughs> I took a couple graphic arts classes and learned to prepare pay stubs. This is how things were printed. You, pr you printed out the words or pictures, and then you glued them onto a piece of cardboard. Yeah, with with old-fashioned glue. Yeah, and, yeah, and then... Rubber cement. Then the printer, the printing company, photographed those and turned it into a plate from which they could print. And now, um, then these physical paste ups gave way to digital files using, at first, Quark Express, a clumsy program. Then there were Illustrator and Photoshop and Dreamweaver. Then iMovie, on and on. I mean, but these changes were all in my lifetime. Okay, and for me... I was a 90s middle school teacher, English, and I remember the principal coming into my room and saying that we, we had to start learning about computers, like we were going to have district-wide workshops, and, and I was scared shitless. <laughs> in fact, I remember a vivid dream in which the principal entered my classroom and told me I was fired because I didn't measure up on basic computer skills. I was really scared. And they had computer classrooms in those days where you'd have a room full of about 30 big, big computers. And you had to sign up to reserve the room for your students. And then whatever we learned in those district-wide workshops, we would teach the kids mm -hmm. how to use okay. those skills. And then... Um, this was at first mind-boggling to me, and I'm sure my heart rate increased considerably. I felt like 
menopause was making an early arrival. And God. Kept telling myself to just breathe, Nancy, breathe. I tried to write down all the steps involved in each topic the workshops covered, but it was very hard for me. Thank God the instructors noticed our stress level and they started handing out print, printed step by step guides. Oh. So that was my introduction. Yeah. And then it got better or worse? Oh, it got better because you I started you to learn a little bit. And at least I can, I can get around it comfortably. And my breathing is pretty steady <laughs> as I check my email, Facebook, Instagram, and make slideshows and graphs and whatever else I'm familiar with. I've come a long ways from the 90s, just like the computer has, if you think about it. Yeah. Well, I we have a big... Uh, iMac, an ancient iMac with a large screen, and we use it for our TV. As a TV screen, this is like a minuscule postage stamp <laughs> compared to what I see people hauling out of uh, appliance stores. <laughs> it's but, pretty big, though. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, I use it for most of my creative activities, including now this podcast, The Bitch and Sisters. I also take Zoom exercise classes from the comfort and privacy of my early morning bedroom. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, because no way would I do this in person. And I don't know how long you have had a cell phone, but I resisted. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I did not want to have a cell phone. We had the same number in this little old log cabin for like 42 years. And, and finally, we, I feel like we were forced to get a cell phone. Yeah, why was that? Because uh, I was forced by society. If I wanted to look at a program at a play, like to see what was happening in the play, I had to access it online. If I wanted to order food at certain restaurants, I had to get out a cell phone and look online at their menu. We would say, oh, we don't have cell phones. And they'd say, uh, well, uh, maybe, maybe we can find you a menu. Yeah, and I remember... And they didn't like it. <laughs> I remember having, during COVID, when we were traveling, we had to have our um, information on our phone in order to go overseas. And if you didn't have a smartphone, then you had to wait in this line, and you some people missed their plane. Oh. Yep. I wouldn't have been on that plane back then, but... Uh, I finally got one because, you know, it, it was just getting to be too hard. Well, for us, we have a smart TV, although there's nobody smart enough in our house to run oh. it. And we have an iPhone that fits in our hands and no cord, no operator, or even a party line like in the old days. Yeah. And a security system we have now that sends our phone pictures of what it's seeing. And I have a Bluetooth. In your house? Yeah. It, it, you know, it shines outside, so we know oh, if anyone's oh, oh, there. Okay. And we have a Bluetooth setup that my son gave me and showed me, so now I can send my music from the computer to my Bose amplifier and play what I have on my computer. I have a refrigerator that tells me when to replace my water filter that dispenses filtered water. I don't think you need a brain anymore. <laughs> You're right. Even our new car is so complex with so many computerized gizmos, we had to stop into the dealers to have them get rid of the phone interaction because it was causing us so many in distractions. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm <laughs> There's amazed. been a revolution in our lifetime. Definitely. I mean, you, you live long enough, and this is what happens. I can't fix those things when they go, though. <laughs> no. Well, we did finally, you know, as I say, get cell phones. I got one, and sure enough, I became addicted in about a year. Ah. Why come over here and sit at this chair and look at my big iMac when I can sit in my bed and look at oh, my yeah. iPhone and sip a cup of coffee at the, time, at the same time? And it, it does have it all. It's my ever-ready assistant from news to social media to audio books. I listen to a lot of audio books. I, I'm, I'm okay with technology. It has enhanced my life more than it has hindered. It has uh, provided a means of artistic expression with like iMovie and Photoshop and such. And it br has brought me closer to the lives of family and friends. Unfortunately, it has exposed me to news of the world. Oh, yeah. So there are a few downsides, and I try not to uh, 
get too excited about things I can't have that I can't influence or but well when something goes wrong do you have like I have my son who you know majored in computer yeah he could and help he, you yeah he can help me or my grandkids I make a list until somebody shows up who knows how to do all this oh, stuff you a list of all the problems <laughs> yeah and oh, then huh. they go through them like that just really fast hmm. and I'm like wow that's great <laughs> now I can start over <laughs> Hmm. You, do you have? Well, we can call our, um, yeah, we can call somebody, what do they call it, uh, our, uh, yeah, our, our internet provider, and someone who I usually know will actually answer, but I haven't had many problems recently. There used to be a little shop um, uh, where there was a, a man we knew who could solve our uh, Apple problems if we had problems, but... I haven't had a lot of problems. You better knock on wood. Yeah, right. I know when I was subbing, after, you know, when I retired in 2010, they had just introduced that spring something called a smart board at schools. And the teacher, like when I sub, I don't know how to operate these smart boards. And they... They have everything on them. Like what? Well, they put all, they hook it up to their computers. And so they have um, assignments on it. They have supply lists, newsletters, parent notes. They know instantly if, an, you know, parents know instantly if an assignment has been turned in, their Ooh. child's grade, field trip information, unpaid lunch receipts. And there's no more chalkboards. And the teacher can show the entire class videos on the smart board, messages, even countdown time to get to the next activity. They interact with it by pushing buttons and set it up for hours of soft music during work time. Huh. And I bet none of those teachers had any nightmares like me about not <laughs> Well, how yeah, they work. grew up with it. Yeah. Yeah, I can still remember mm -hmm. one of my grandsons. He was about three at the time, and we had some educational program on the computer okay. where he was, you know, supposed to pick things that were similar or who knows what. So he was pecking away. And our rule was, if we say it's over on the computer, it is over. You are done. You are going to do something else. Mm -hmm. Because often they'd resist. So he would say, um, he would say, um, well, Ma, Grandma, I'm learning. Oh. I'm learning. <laughs> Perfect excuse. Well, you know, at school, as for the kids, every child has their own computer now. It's distributed by their school district. And they keep them in the classroom, and then I, I think they can take them home. And, but it has programs on it that know exactly the skill level of each child, and it dispenses activities at that child's level. And then That's there's a good. test at the end of each activity that the child has to score at least 80% or higher before the computer spits out the next activity. Huh. And if they score lower than 80%, it gives them, like it reteaches them the skill using a totally different program. And the children eat these up. There's not a sound in the room when it's computer time. Reminds me of when mom and dad bought their first black and white TV and we all started watching Jack Benny or Howdy Doody. You yeah, know? yeah. And now there's AI coming. And I don't even really know exactly what that is, but I know there's supposedly big possible problems with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can't even imagine. Well, Steve Jobs once said, we have to decide if the new technology is worth the investment. You know... With black and white TV, we decided we like color better. We liked a remote. Everybody loves a remote, so you don't have to get up and change the channels. And then they added recording ability, and we were in love. And with a typewriter, we decided the keyboard made life easier for us. Plus, it no longer required inky tape. It came with a delete button instead of whiteout, and a shift button instead of a handle to pull. Remember those typewriters? When you bought a printer like you have to go with it, so you could print out as many copies as you wanted. We fell in love with an ATM. I'm told it's easier to get your money out of a bank any time of the day, though I have never used it. Well, the smart board is more convenient than clapping erasers, and with everything online for parents, we save paper. Ultimately, what? the computer age has made our lives easier until it breaks down. Yeah. <laughs> and then the hard part starts. You have to think.
Or at least no. until AI comes along and it does that for us. I don't know. Then we're all going to think that once again, computers make our lives easier and we'll welcome it into our homes. Be careful, Janet, what you wish for. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Janet and I come to you twice a month with new episodes. Some are funny, some are serious, some are just our crazy opinions. I hope you enjoyed our show. Me too. It's been a pleasure. We are Nancy and Janet, the, the Bitchin' Sisters. Sisters. Music by Hall and Sidnor.